What up, what up, Wimbush here. And can you believe that it's been over six years since I last made this tutorial? But with the recent version of Unreal Engine, I'm using 5.6, there's been a lot more changes in there. So I thought it'd be a good idea to redo this tutorial. And so to get started, as I said before, I'm inside of Unreal Engine 5.6 and you can see I have Quixel Bridge open. That's because I'm using Mega Scans here, but feel free to use any textures that you want. So I'm gonna come down here to my content browser and I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna make a new material. Now I'm just gonna name this one M underscore landscape. That's what the documentation usually says to name it. And now I'm gonna open this up. And now you can see we have our material graph here. So I'm gonna take these three textures from Mega Scans, the base, the normal, and then this ord file, which I'll show you what this means in a second. I'm gonna take all three of these and I'm gonna select these and put them inside of my material graph. Now I wanna make this as easy as possible to follow along for beginners. So I'm gonna go through step-by-step step how I set up each one of these materials. So with these materials inside the material graph, the first thing I'm gonna do is right click in my graph and I'm just gonna type in landscape. And then the third one down, this is landscape layer blend. I'm gonna left click on this. And for now, I'm just gonna put this inside the base color and that's just gonna be what we're doing for right now, but this is gonna change later. And then again, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna type in make, M-A-K-E. And I wanna look for this one. This is make material attributes. Now I'm gonna move this over like so. And I'm gonna bring this up and it's gonna be super easy. So this top layer here, right here, this is gonna be our color map or our diffuse map. We're gonna take the RGB, we're gonna left click and bring it into our base color. And then this texture right here, this is our normal map. So we're gonna take the RGB of this one. We're gonna put this one into the normal map. And then this one right here. So this is a material pack file, an ORD. And so if you look over here, this is exactly what goes into what. So you're gonna take the RGB values and you're gonna put those in the parameters that they belong in. So for the red right here, we're gonna take this. This belongs to ambient occlusion. And then the green, we're gonna take this and put it into our roughness pass. And then the blue, we're gonna take this one and put it into displacement. So now that we have our first material set up, let's go over to the landscape layer blend and get that properly set up. So with it selected here inside of my material graph, I'm gonna come over here on the left-hand side where it says details. Under layers, I wanna select this plus button. So I'm actually gonna select this three times because I have three different materials. And you can see this node right here, this correlated with the plus symbol right there. That's why this expanded out. So right here under index zero, I'm gonna scroll this down. And under layer name, I'm just gonna type this one as beach sand. And you can see as I type that out here, now I update it here instead of our landscape layer blend. So now I could take my make attributes for this beach sand, I could left click and I could drag it into here and that's how we're gonna connect it. Now, as I start building out my other materials, we're gonna change these ones as well. But first, let's add in a texture coordinate. So I'm gonna right click, type in coordinate. And as soon as you start typing in coordinate, you should see texture coordinate. I'm gonna left click on this. And now I'm gonna connect this to the UVs of each one of my textures. And let me move this down here like so. Okay, it's in the middle, no particular reason. But if you look inside the details panel, you can see now we have scaling for a U and our V. So we have UV scaling here. By default, it's gonna be one, but we'll check this out whenever we get everything properly set up. And this is just gonna be a quick tip for organization. If you select all your nodes right here, and then you hit C on your keyboard, that's gonna box everything in here. And you, under comment, you can say what it is. So I'm just gonna put in beach sand. So now if I move this box around, that's gonna move all the nodes around as well. And then you can also move them individually within the box here as well. So I just like doing it just to organize everything a little bit better because if you start getting a ton of different textures in here, it gets really messy really quick. So this is a nice way that you can organize it. So now with this minimized, we're gonna look back down here inside of our content browser and we're gonna build out the other two. So like I said at the top, I wanna walk through slowly for anybody that's a beginner, but feel free to fast forward if you already know this part. So I'm gonna left click and drag these three materials into here. And then same thing as before, I'm gonna right click, type in make, and then I'm gonna come right here to where it says make material attributes. And then we're just gonna plug and play just like we did before. So my normal is gonna go into my normal map down here under my order file, the red, that again, that's gonna go over to ambient occlusion. The green is gonna come up to roughness. And then the blue is gonna come down here to displacement. And I can actually take my texture coordinate. I can just control C to copy it. And then down here where your mouse cursor is, I'm gonna hit control V just to paste it, just so I didn't have to search for it again. But I'm gonna connect these to the UVs. I like doing it individual this way, just in case I want one particular texture to be bigger than the other. But if you want it to have it like overall, you could just use one and connect it to all the UV. So it's totally up to you how you wanna get this set up. But again, I'm gonna select all three of these. I'm gonna hit C. 
And that's going to bring up this box and inside my comment. I'm just going to name this one forced. I'm going to move this down like so. And then over here, I'm going to click on my landscape layer blend again. Move this down here so we can see it. And over here inside of my details panel, I'm going to scroll this down to where it says index. And I'm just going to name this one forced. And now I'm going to take my make attributes. I'm just going to connect this one to the forest layer. And then while we're here, I'm just going to name my last one here grass because that's going to be the material that I'm going to be building out next. So again, I'm going to take these three materials, put them inside of my material graph. And this is the last one. So I'm going to right click the make material attribute, put the top one into the base color, put this one into the normal map. And then I'm going to take my red right here, put this into ambient occlusion. Green goes into roughness and the blue goes into displacement. I can hit control V. That's going to paste in my texture coordinate. Then I'm just going to put this into the UVs. And again, I'm just doing this just so everybody can see exactly what I'm doing. I just want to be transparent just so you didn't see that I skipped any type of steps in this along the way. I'm going to hit C, put this into the box, and I'm just going to name this one grass. And I'm going to scroll out here a little bit. I'm going to take my node and I'm going to put this into this grass node right here. So down here where I have my grass, I'm going to take my make attributes, left click and drag this into my layer of grass. And that's going to be it. So now we have three different textures set up here. And the last thing I want to do is click on my node right here, my main node that we started off with. And over under the details panel, we have this little box here that says use material attributes. Now, when I turn this on, it's going to disconnect it right here. We just have to reconnect it. So I'm going to hit this right here. Now you can see that I disconnected it. And what it's doing is it's telling it to use all the attributes from everything we just set up. So all you have to do is left click, drag it into there, and now we're ready to go. So you just come up here to the top left. We're going to click on save, and then we're going to exit this out. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to build out a landscape, and then I'm going to show you how we could properly attach this. So in the top left hand corner where it says selection mode, I'm going to left click on this, come down here to landscape left click and down here instead of new i want to click on import from file so real quick for context i created this inside of world creator but like i said you can use any application that you want blender gaia houdini anything that you build out your landscape then as you can see right here i exported out a height map and then i exported out some splat mats as well so i'm going to get started with the height map here or you can use a generic terrain if you want but i'm going to left click here under height map i'm going to take my height map that i exported out i'm going to click on open and then right here, it says use tiled image. I hit no. I'm not really sure what that does. So if anybody else knows, let me know. Down here under scale, I'm going to put this one at 40. And then right here where it says material, I want to take that material that I just created, that M underscore landscape. I'm going to left click and drag that into that material slot. And now I'm going to click on import. Now, don't worry if you built your landscape first and then your material, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to get that set up because there is a little discrepancy in there. But now that we have everything set up, let me go above my terrain here, which that kind of looks pretty dope, right? With the fog and everything. But you might notice there is no texture here on our terrain. So over here in the top left under landscape, where it says sculpt, you want to go to the right where it says paint. We're going to left click on this and we're going to come down here to where it says layers. Now, let me drag this out so we can see it a little bit better. Now, remember, I said if you build out your terrain first and then you build out your landscape, these objects right here, these will be grayed out. And so I know this trips up a lot of people, but there is a way that we could get this working. So there's this new thing up here, this little lightning bolt. This is autofill tangent layer assets. Now, if you left click on this, this window is going to pop up. And so what you want to do is you want to turn this one on and then it's going to say, please specify which target layer should be set. Right now, we don't have anything assigned here. And so I'm going to put unassigned layers only. I'm just going to click this one and then just give it a second to cook. And once it's done, you can see now if I cliff click on it, it actually built out our layer info for us. But you might notice it says no weight blend. And so a way to get around this is if you left click down here, come under edit, this window right here where it says no weight blend, we're going to turn this off and then we're going to click on save. Now we want to do that because we want the weights to actually blend when we paint everything on. So we're going to do that for each one of these layers. So I'm going to come down here to edit, no weight blend. I'm going to turn that off, hit save. Then I'm going to do it for my grass layer as well. So left click right here under edit, no weight blend, turn this off, then click save again. So now everything is properly set up for us to paint and everything. So let's fill this up with our material first, and then I'll show you the paint on top of it. So I'm going to start off with the beach sand. I'm going to right click, 
And that's gonna bring up this option window in which we wanna come down here to fill layer. Now this is gonna take a couple of seconds. So I'm gonna left click on this and depending on the speed of your computer, it might take a couple of seconds, it might take a minute, but once it's done, it's gonna fully populate out your terrain with that one individual material that you just set up. And there we go. So let me zoom into my map here. I'm gonna come down here at POV level. So now you can see our entire terrain has this sand material on here. Let me zoom out here just a tad bit. Let me make my brush size a little bit smaller. There we go. So now you can see we have our tiling material here. It's engulfing our entire landscape. But remember how we set everything up so that we can actually scale this afterwards. So let me open up that material. I'm gonna come back down here to my content drawer. I'm gonna open up my landscape material that we made. I'm gonna zoom this down so we can see everything happening here in real time. But I'm gonna come up here to the one that we have made sand or called sand, sorry. So if I click on my texture coordinate, down here under UV tiling. Let's put this up to something crazy. Let's just do 50 by 50. So you can see exactly what's gonna happen down here. So I'm gonna move this over before I hit save, just so we can see it happening in a report. So now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click on save and just give us a moment. And you'll see that this is gonna texture insanely small. If you want it to be extremely large, you're gonna to have to go in reverse. So I'm gonna hit 0.1 by 0.1, click on save. Now you can see our texture is extremely large. Now, let me make my brush size a little bit larger. And I'm gonna come down here and let's select the grass. So, I mean, it's as easy as just left click and drag. And you might notice you get the checkerboards at first. That's because it just has to prepare the shader. But once it does, now you can see I'm actually painting the grass on my terrain here. Now, same thing as before. If you wanted to individually set this grass up as a different size, so you can see how it's tiling here but on this side, it's extremely large. So you can individually set up those tiles on there, the sizing of them. I'm gonna zoom out here a tad bit because if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I left click and drag, now you can see that's how we can erase the paint. So that took me a little bit to figure out that's something else that I see not a lot of people talk about, but if you wanna paint on, just left click and drag. If you wanna erase it, hold down the shift key and that's how you erase everything off. Now, remember, I built this terrain out here inside of World Creator. I'm just using generic colors here to show what everything would be for like the grass and the rocks and the terraces and everything like that. But from here, I exported out splat maps. And wait, if you're not sure what splat maps are, each one of these uh, maps right here, these represent each one of these textures here. So we can actually bring these inside of Unreal Engine so it looks exactly like this. Now, to set up this splat map, let me zoom out here a tiny bit. And if I come down here inside of my layer, if I right click, Back in Unreal Engine 4, you used to be able to just import the map, but they set it up differently in Unreal Engine 5.6. You're gonna select this one right here. This is import from, export to file, left click on this, and you'll notice that up here in the tab, it brought us over to the manage tab now. You wanna come down here to the first layers palette. You wanna select this down, and now you can see we have each one of our materials that we built out. So I'm gonna turn each one of these on, and right here where you see the three different dots, I'm gonna select this one, and I'm just gonna put them in an order. So I'm gonna select my first black map, hit no on a tiled image, do it again for my forest. I'm going to select the one in the middle, hit no again. And then for my grass, I'm going to select this one. Then I'm going to select the one that's last, hit okay, hit no. And now with everything set up in here, I'm going to click on import. And there we go. So once it's done, this is how the landscape tool looks with the splat maps on there. So you can see how this is gonna start getting really powerful if you're using any type of like world building tool and you wanna bring that into Unreal Engine, set up with your own custom materials, have them be able to scale up and also bring in the splat map. So once you have this in here, you can actually paint over top of it. So I'm gonna come back over here to my landscape tool. Let me zoom closer into my terrain here. Let's say about here. I'm gonna click on paint, click on forest, Let's just turn this up a tad bit. We can raise up the brush. And now you can see as I left click and drag, now we're actually painting over top of that splat map. So you can just combine it, you can mix, you can do all types of crazy stuff with it, depending on what you're building out for your environment. But you can see how powerful this tool is once you have it properly set up. Now I know some people might be asking, what about the displacement? I personally don't set up displacement separately because I think the normal maps are more than enough, especially if you wanna have your scene optimized. But I'll leave a link to the documentation if you wanna set up the displacement separately. But hopefully being able to you know, scale up your textures, being able to use splat 
maps, and then also setting up your custom material is going to be more than enough to get you started. So if you do like this video, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're feeling. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in that next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.